Hello everyone. Welcome to day 15 of our machine learning master class internship and I welcome you all. So in the previous session we have discussed about algorithms which is nothing but our linear models. So in linear models we have elaborately seen about our uh, linear regression then lasso ridge and then about logistic regression and we have wind up our yesterday's class. So in today's session or in this session what we are going to do is we are going to see a lot of algorithms in today's class and uh, yeah we will be starting with support vector machines both the classifier as well as regressor and we will be seeing about decision tree algorithms which is a tree based algorithm we will be seeing about uh, classifier as well as regressor and decision tree how they work and then we will be moving into ensemble algorithms in today's class when we talk about ensemble algorithms we have bagging techniques and boosting techniques and that so don't get confused with these new names we'll be seeing about what those those are just simple terms to represent their activity and in bagging we'll be seeing about some algorithms random forest we both will be seeing about both classifier as well as regressor and uh, we'll also see about boosting techniques and we'll be covering about ada boost and xg boost algorithms in today's session so this will be the agenda for today's class yeah and once again i welcome you all to this session so talking about these algorithms we'll see today's class will be or this class will be more a uh, theory based we won't be having much interactive hands on session because before going into hands on hands on is nothing but you can just import the library names and then use it but if you want to learn the basics of what is happening behind it what's the math behind it then we need to have this mandatory theory session so this will be completely a theoretical session about what happens in the back end of an algorithm how a machine learning algorithm this particular algorithm works and i'll also tell you how to import it we can go hands on for that what's the command to import it and uh, yeah so the next class day 16 will also cover algorithms we'll be having about algorithms uh, such as uh, naive bias classifier regressor and then we will be seeing about uh, k nearest neighbor algorithm and if you see uh, we have we are seeing a lot about uh, supervised learning algorithms in tomorrow's session or the next session we will be seeing about uh, uh, after seeing our uh, naive bias and kn and we will be moving towards our uh, clustering algorithm k means clustering algorithm for unsupervised learning will also be covered in the next class after that in day 17 we will be seeing about a uh, hyperparameter optimization and then model evaluation part so with that when day 18 we can comfortably start our machine learning project so yeah without any delay we will get started and uh, start our class with our first algorithm in today's class which is going to be support vector machine talking about support vector machine support vector machines are a popular and powerful supervised learning algorithms which can be used for classification as well as regression analysis but i wish to tell you that support vector machine is mostly uh, preferred for classification problems uh, we will be mostly dealing with classification problems it's not that much preferred for regression analysis but you can okay it's not built for regression but it has been modified later on so the main task for a uh, support vector machine is classification and that to classification when you talk about classification you can use it uh, primarily for your binary classification which is yes or no two class classification right so you can use it for that but if you ask me whether uh, can i use it for multi class classification do i should should i not use that support vector machine for multi class classification no not like that you it is possible you can use it once again what it will do is it will follow our one versus rest like what it has been happened in logistic regression so in previous class we have discussed right in logistic regression what the algorithm does so if you have multi class then it will decide at a time it will select a uh, one class and then consider the remaining as the opposite class so once again it is converting it into a binary and go with the format of one versus rest or one versus all so the same way support vector machine also go with a uh, multi class classification but if you ask me this guy support vector machine performs very well when it is used for a binary classification problem it gives the best okay so talking about support vector machine they are based on finding the hyperplane okay we are going to find the hyperplane which is a plane or a line that best separates the data into different classes 
by maximizing the margin between the hyperplane and closest data point. So we are dealing with some names which is called as hyperplane, okay, and we'll be dealing about support vectors, etc. We'll see that what it is. So once again, support vector machine is a very versatile algorithm which can handle both linear and non-linear data set. Talking about linear and non-linear, I'll give you with example. So in your data set, if you are going with regression or classification, you can't expect it to be linear. So what if you don't have any idea about what is linear and non-linear, we'll see that. So we'll continue with our support vector machine. So this is how the support vector machine classifies two data points. For example, uh, imagine we are having two classes, yes or no, like class or one or zero. We have a blue color and a green color. And uh, what we can see is we can see a center line, which is red in color. It is classifying or it cuts in the plane and uh, differentiate between these two. That's fine. But I'm having other two dotted lines from here and here, and we are having the formula also. So what does that line means? What is happening there? We'll see that. So this is how a support vector machine will work. And if you see in the center, we are having a line, right? And that line, the middle line we are having that is called as hyperplane. So that is actually the plane we are discussing which best separates the data into different classes. Then what is these lines are called as? These lines are called as support vectors. Support vectors, that's how the name has been given for this as support vector machine. So talking about it, see here, usually it will be like a binary classification for classification, even though if you have multi-class, once again, it is one versus rest. So which means that you are going to have like this a two class so obviously the format is going to be like this so there will be a line which best separates these two points in the plane fine so what is this hyperplane is you will be having one hyperplane for this class and you will be having another hyperplane for this class and if you closely watch this you can find see here the hyperplane for this blue color class passes through the closest to point which is near to the hyperplane or which is the nearest point to the hyperplane which best separates that, right? So if you see here in the green side, it is not passing through these points. It is passing through the point which is very close to your hyperplane. So from, for example, imagine this uh, blue color as class A and uh, imagine this green color as class B. Then the class A, okay, so which point in class A which is closer to your hyperplane, through that your plane will be passing, so that is called as support vector for this class A like that for green also we will be having another plane which is passing which is the closest point we are having towards the hyperplane from B side so that will also be mapped and we will be having a hyperplane which is in the center and we will be having support vectors so how the best fit is obtained etc I'll tell you now so imagine this is your data points okay it's a classification problem so you are having two classes and when you plot your data points, you are having your points like this. And you can ask me like uh, data points, you cannot exactly get some data like this. There is actually a task for that too. That is what the linear and non-linear we are supposed to discuss. We'll see that. So imagine you are having this data, two classes are available. Okay. So what you will be doing is you will be fitting a line. Okay. So that line should separate these two perfectly. So we all already know right so we have seen it in linear regression also a straight line so if you want to uh, separate it or if you want to pass through it in regression we have done right so you can have multiple fits if you ask me this line can pass through this or this the hyperplane can, can be of any side right not only like this you can tilt it towards here or in any way so how that does that work so what will happen is so that's why they are including something known as hyperplane. So instead of fitting a single line, so you'll be having a line uh, that is will be middle towards your support vectors. Once again, hyperplane is the center line and support vectors will be for each class, you will be having a support vector. So totally you will be having two support vector. So for this red color class, there will be a support vector which passes through the closest point which is available. So if you have another point here, then your support vector will be passing towards here. So your hyperplane will tilt towards that side. Like that for our yellow color class, we also have another support vector which passes through that point. So now when you have your support vector, you can have your hyperplane. That's fine. So now you know how our hyperplane is passing and how support vectors 
or build okay it is just passing through the closest point from each class so we are having all these three now if you ask me uh, see here this example now it will be a really good question for you to ask like linear regression you can have multiple best fit so how will you decide which fit is best because see here yeah we are passing through the closest point but what is this case this line passes through the closest point of blue and this line passes through the closest point of red like that see here this line passes through the closest point of blue right and here also it passes through the closest point of red but which is selected okay so you can go like this way like we have here or this way this is like uh, much more broader and this is much more narrow right so which will be selected if you ask me then the task of this support vector machine is to select okay a yeah, support vector and hyperplane or a support vector which has maximum margin so talking about margin which is the distance between this line and this line so the distance between these two will be calculated and uh, visually now you can see that this is a broader one this is a narrow one so obviously this will be selected as a good fit so your task is to fit a maximum margin so that will be done by our support vector machine algorithm you have both classifier as well as regressor this is for classification once again i'll tell you how it works for regression and all yeah so now if you ask me okay this point is good but whether can you ex expect the same method or same type of uh, data if you plot when you are in your in a real world data set i will tell you it's not even possible you can't roughly have this very easily and uh, if some place this is called as linear data which is linearly separable with a linear line but what if your data set is something like this can you even separate this you want to have a hyperplane to which separates best of the two and you need to have support vectors where will you have a support vector here think about it can i have a support vector here so i have two classes this one this is a class yellow color this is another class so i want to pass a closer line which passes through the yellow but how will i even fit it in this case according to our support vector machine blank right we don't have any idea how it will work so what will happen is you have some options in your support vector machine algorithm so one of such option is to choose the kernel so kernel is a parameter which you can modify and there are some parameters if you use it what will happen is to avoid or to overcome this linear versus non linear data problem because that's what the task uh if you imagine our regression problem linear regression we had used a straight line but when we when we go for logistic regression we have skipped it and we went for a sigmoid curve but here to avoid such problems for non linear problems we will be using something known as kernel see here when you see it in 2d you can see these points are like this but there will be a plane okay like it's 3d in any surface okay there can be points which separate these two see here when you view it in 3d it's like for example not only particularly in 3d like some features will help you to differentiate between them okay like in 3d if you view, view it the same thing if you view in 3d you can see you can create a decision surface here so anything above that will be belong to one class and below that will be belonging to the green color class one will be red another one will be blue so in this decision surface you can have your hyperplane and to this closest red color point you can have your support vector and in green color you can also have your support vector that's actually good right so like that support vector machine has some options in kernel which you can particularly utilize for handling this non linear data so you need to analyze your data too before going into this uh, your data is linear or non linear or you can go with support vector machine and check your result if it's not good you can utilize this kernel parameter about talking about the hyper parameter like this optimizations and all we'll be seeing it in day 70 uh, about some introduction about uh, grid set cv or randomized cv we'll be discussing there and yeah so that's how kernel will work and it will help you to find see here uh, we have seen this point right so now we can't separate it so if you use the kernel options you can able to find the algorithm will automatically try to find the plane okay a decision surface which decides between these two which will give you your hyperplane and support vectors from that you can go with further predictions right
So that's what one advantage of our support vector machine. It's really perform well when you go with your binary classification. And uh, yeah, talking about the math behind. So till now we have seen about how it works. So talking about what is the formula, what is the math happening behind. So once again, its task is very simple. Okay, you want to just maximize the margin between them. So there is actually a formula for this. So if we talk about how it works, I need to tell another story. Please follow through it. So yeah, we are having our optimal hyperplane, support vectors from both sides, maximized margin, etc. So yeah, we'll go from the base. Once again, we are having a straight line, right? Straight line, you know the formula from linear regression, which is going to be y equal to mx plus c. Okay, a hyperplane is nothing but a straight line. So it's actually y equal to mx plus c. Uh, for now, let us not think about our support vectors. Okay, so I'm having two points. One is red, another one is green. Like we had here, we are going to have two points. One is red, another one is green. And uh, yeah, it is plotted. You can see the value of P1, the point one is plotted in the space, which is minus three in X axis and zero in Y axis. And when you talk about this point two, it is plotted in the space in three comma three, which is three in the X axis and three in the Y axis. Fine. So we have plotted it and our hyperplane imagine passes through the center. So now what will be the value of C if you imagine? What will be the value of C actually? So C is nothing but the intercept, the line intercept where it reaches your axis Y, right? So where this line is reaching your Y, it is reaching in the zero. So your value of C will be zero. And let us have our slope value M as minus one. Okay, slope will give you how tilted your line is, right? The different. So if you have higher values, it will alter your orientation of your line. The tilting of your line, let it be minus one consider that and uh, let us keep it that so the parameters okay so which is going to be considered in the variable which is w which is nothing but your value of m and c and it is going to be in this format so if your m for example we'll keep it as minus one and the c value is zero so the value of w is going to be minus one and zero so what the support vector machine do is it uses a formula it may look complex i'll tell you so you have your parameters of the line, which is M and C minus one and zero, right? So you do use as a formula, which is transpose of this W and dot product matrix dot product with X. Okay. And here we will be doing it with the next point. I'll show you. So imagine we are having two points, right? So we have W. So if you want to apply to this formula, you need to take transpose of it. So W transpose is going to be, you need to convert it in this format, right? So the rows will become columns. The number of columns will become rows taking transpose. So this minus one comma zero in matrix will turn, turn into this format with two rows and one column, which is minus one and zero. And you want to perform dot product with your X from this point, which is minus three zero. So if you perform dot product, this minus one and minus three will become plus three and zero and zero will multiply and become zero. So you want to add it. So total of this is going to be three for this point which if you note it down, it is a positive value. Fine. Leave it. Come back to the right side. Now we want to do the same for this point. Okay. Which is three comma three. You have a value of W transpose, which is minus one and zero and take a transpose of it and then go with your X value dot product minus one into minus three will be minus three plus zero into minus three will be zero. So your output is minus three. So don't consider the three value. Okay. It can be any value, but if you see, so hereafter, when you go with this support vector formula, what will happen is the class, which is belong to this red will be a positive value always. Okay. If you use this formula and uh, if you go and see this point, whatever things you have beyond this hyperplane in this side will be having a negative value. So that's how it will differentiate. See here for all the points, which is lie in the left side of the hyperplane, the WT, which is the transpose of W and X value will be a positive. And if you do the same on the right side of the hyperplane, the points which lie on the right side, you will be getting a negative value. Okay. It's the formula. If you apply, you can check it. So in the left side of your hyperplane, it will be a positive values, the output from your W transpose of X and uh, on the right side, it will be negative values. So we'll be having two classes. One is positive. Another one is negative. 
and this is the formula finally okay so talking about our support vector if you have a support vector here and another support vector here your formula will be like this which is nothing but this w right we are discussing and the dot product with x plus b okay constant and the output is going to be minus 1 here in the left side okay so your value when you calculate it this value will be positive here my when it minus 1 here it will be negative so if you have it to plus 1 so it will be when a final output will be minus 1 negative here it will be positive here so this is the formula for both and when you do or do some cal basic algebraic formula calculation with these two formula you will be getting a formula output which is 2 divided by the magnitude of this value w okay so i'll tell you how it is derived from these two i'll show you in the next slide so your task is this is the margin value between these two when you calculate which is 2 divided by magnitude of this w okay and your task is to maximize this how much maximum it is that much good the fit is that's what the, our support vector machine do in the math behind it so this is the calculation see here you are having two formulas right write down those two formulas and then calculate it okay substitute it and then calculate it when you go and sum it down you can see we are taking the b cancels out okay and then this one will become two here you will be having with wx2 minus wx1 equal to two and uh, if you take the common and then divide it with this magnitude of w so your distance difference between your x2 minus x1 will be two divided by magnitude of w and you should be having this as maximum as possible so which fit is giving maximum of this value which is two divided by the magnitude of w and you know the w values right what is w value which is nothing but your intercept and uh, slope value m and c value so that is w so which line which is giving the value which is high in your 2 divided by this magnitude so that will be the maximum margin and that is chosen as the best fit and that is what the math behind our support vector machine classifier so i hope this is fine you guys understood about what is happening behind moving with the next one if you ask me then what is happening in your multi-class classification in support vector machine it is going to be one versus rest so if you have your green side see here in red we will be having these both so like that one is taken as one class and the remaining two will be considered as another class like that it will be split and based on the probability we have seen with our logistic regression multi-class same is applied here it is one versus rest concept yeah so that's all about our support vector classifier so if you ask me about then what will happen in support vector, vector regression or support vector regressor once again see here guys regression what we are having here we are having a straight line then actually it's a good task you can just plot the points but how will, will it work talking about support vector classifier your task is to find a support vector which passes through the closest point from both the classes and a hyperplane which is having your maximum margin that's it you will be winding it off and you can make predictions with that so if you pass a new value in wherever it is fitting so based on that the output will be decided either which class it is but when you go for support vector regression we will be having something known as epsilon tube okay so if this epsilon tube which is nothing but the distance between your two support vectors it's like a tube and what is the task of it is nothing but you need to find okay so this the task of it is to fit the hyperplane and the support vectors which is your positive or negative hyperplane which is nothing but support vectors to fit maximum points inside of this tube okay so which orientation or which value from your w which is going to be see here once again y equal to mx plus c m and c value m and c value so when you have it which fit gives you most of the points inside this tube which inside this epsilon tube that will be a best fit and you know regression so with this straight line you can plot your x and y values and get your output so that's how our support vector regression works and the task is to minimize this output which is 1 divided by 2 if you go with this formula the value should be minimum so which is minimum which fit is minimum that will be the best fit which will be covering all the points inside most of the points yeah so that's all about our support vector machine how the math behind it how it works so if you want to use it you need to take it from sklearn 
dot svm the support vector machine it will be in small letters you need to import you can import svc which you see here when you import the model it is given in capital letter note it down and uh, you can search in browser also if you type the name of it the scikit-learn library documentation will pop up and you can know where your algorithm how to get it so if you type with svc which is support vector classifier and svr is nothing but support vector regressor okay and also if you check the documentation we have discussed about kernel right so there are a lot of kernel options here we have linear which is applied directly for linear for others you can go with polynomial and try it or rbf and try it and sigmoid is also available as kernels so if i want to use it in support vector classifier when i call the algorithm when i create an object i'll be passing kernel equal to linear or kernel equal to rbf okay you can set the kernel you can check the kernel and use it for your application so i'll show you from sklearn dot svm import svc which is support vector classifier you can also import support vector regressor and use it okay so our next task is to go and create a object classifier will be support vector classifier and uh, you can also have your regressor this is just model right so we have already seen how to use it so when we do a project we will be combining everything and go in a flow starting from the pre-processing step data collection every part since we are learning this particular thing right now we will be skipping those part and uh, yeah you can also set the kernel value you can set a uh, linear you can also get it actually it is linear you can also set uh, what all kernels we had here you can go with uh, polynomial or rbf you can learn about it and the documentation furthermore about how it works what is the kernel etc so if i want to know what is the base version or the default value we'll go with our empty support vector classifier and if i get the kernel i think it is suggesting me the last or we can also check it using sklearn support vector classifier you can check the documentation and you can scroll below the default kernel here is rbf so that's what the default kernel is so if you want to change you can use linear or the other stuff like polynomial etc for polynomial features to find uh, the third layer or the 3d plane yeah decision plane to decide which they belong to and these are all hyperparameters. Uh, for example, there will be a default value, and you have options, and uh, you can optimize that too. That's what we'll be seeing when we see about our hyperparameter optimization later on day 17. Yeah, fine. So we also have support vector regressor, which we can fit and then predict, use it for predictions. So that's all about our support vector machine. I hope it will be clear. And it's time for us to move towards the next big algorithm which is decision tree starting with decision tree we'll see about it it is actually a tree based algorithm so what is tree based and all we'll see decision tree is a supervised learning technique that can be used for both uh, classification problem as well as regression problem but mostly it is preferred for solving classification problems and the decision tree usually mimic human thinking ability it's not like you can use decision tree regressor as well for regression also and the decision tree usually mimics human thinking abil ability while making a decision so it is easy to understand easy for us to understand how it works still there is actually a math behind it we'll be discussing that about uh, some calculations like entropy or information gain so but this mimics our human thinking ability Decision trees are common. You would have used in a tree based uh, algorithms, etc. are av already available in DSA topics, etc. Not only on machine learning. So it's like yes or no. A branch will be created and it will move, right? So that the concept is applicable here also. So the logic behind the decision tree can be easily understood because it's a tree based structure. We'll see what it is. So this is how a decision tree will be. So you will be having a root node or a parent node. The parent node is the one who starts. Okay, it's a root node. And you will be having decision nodes. So from that a decision will be made and it will be splitting. And then another factor will be considered and then it will split. 
So like that, we'll be splitting into parts. I'll tell you with example in a data set. So it will be going with the decision node if it has a decision. Okay, decision node will continue to the next decision. If there is no decision else made, then it is actually a leaf node which will be having no more branches. So this is like a root which will be creating a tree. Okay, and the tree will be having multiple branches. Branches can branch, but a leaf cannot branch, which means the end is the leaf. In between, if you have branches, it is actually decision node. So this is actually a common example to teach decision trees mostly used in many books. We'll see. This is actually a data set and it's a classification data set. And the feature here is weather, temperature, humidity, wind, and your target is play. So the play is nothing but yes or no. Whether based on these conditions you want to predict, okay, whether you can go and play or not. That's what the question is. And in weather we have sunny, cloudy, rainy, some classes there. In temperature we have some conditions. In humidity we have some. In wind we have some. Now, see here, now I want to go and classify this. For example, it's not like we'll be starting with weather. That's what we'll be seeing later when we see about the max behind it. But see, starting with weather, I'm choosing weather as the first condition. So now, if I go and narrow it down, when the weather is sunny, okay, so there is snow here. Okay, fine. Uh, when the weather is sunny, where are we all having sunny here? And the play is yes, which means that the leaf hasn't been obtained here. Okay, there are still branch. So I'll be going with the next step, which is I can go with humidity or temperature like that. So I'm checking humidity, sunny and high play is no. Okay, sunny and normal play is yes. See here. So we can go and check the next one. Sunny and high play is no. So these two matches, right? Sunny and uh, humidity is high. The play is no. Here also the same. So if my data is having the same thing, then actually it reaches the leaf. Okay, if it's normal, it is yes. So that's actually a leaf node. So like that, if you talk about cloudy, when you have cloudy, the play is yes. Okay, here the cloudy play is yes. So based on my data, I can see in all the places where the weather is cloudy, the answer is yes. So that's actually a leaf node here. So if you go with rainy, you have branches. So you'll be going with further features. So still, if you don't obtain it, you will be going with further more features like that. Trees decision will be made and branches will be made. Finally, you reach decisions or leaf nodes. That's how a decision tree works. This is another example, like a question based example, which is actually a guess the animal. I took this from a book. So it is like a question, guess the animal from a decision tree. So the question asked here is, it's like a human thinking capability. See here, more than five legs. So, okay, we are going to predict something which is an animal and your task is like, it can be animal or insect, don't worry about it. Uh, because uh, the more than five legs, no means you can go towards that side or yes means you can come towards this side. We'll go with yes. Okay, it is having more than five legs. So it is hiding under your bed. Okay, so if it's no, then you go with making honey. Okay, so if it's no, then it's a mosquito. Okay, you can see mosquito don't make honey, it can hide under your bed. Okay. So it can have, I don't know exactly about the legs they are given here. Okay. So talking about makes honey means it's a honeybee which can be under your bed and it can have more legs. Fine. Talking about this star of Charlotte's web. Okay. Whether it is build good webs, whether it's a bed bug or spider, you can decide with that. If it's less than five legs, then it's delicious, which means whether it's a eatable one. Okay. So if it's a yes, then it's going with the next few categories. Okay, like that, the algorithm decides with your target variable and then go step by step till it reaches all the end so that with that it can learn. That's how a decision tree works. So talking about the math behind it, we need to understand once again, see here, here the parent is weather and the children are humidity, wind and temperature columns. Now, if you ask me whether should I go with weather only or can I start with temperature? which will be good or after temperature or see here, even though I start with weather, I directly go into humidity. Can I go with to temperature first and then go into humidity or can I go with wind first and then go with the next one? These are some of the questions. Okay. So how will a decision tree decide who is the parent node, who is the next set of children, etc. Actually all type of combination situation will be happening behind. So what will happen is 
so that can be obtained with the help of this entropy calculation if you talk about entropy even though in chemistry the formula is it is a measure of disorder or randomness how random it is so in order to build a decision tree we will need to decide what questions to ask and in what order you don't know what questions to ask based on the features you have but in which order are you going to ask the questions that's actually a big question so in such place we are using this calculation which is entropy it is a concept used to measure the impurity or disorder of a set of data points within a node of a decision tree and when building a decision tree you want to minimize this entropy value so wherever i'll tell you how entropy is calculated if your entropy value is less than actually it means that it actually a good fit so the idea is to find attribute values or features that when used for splitting results in nodes with lower entropy okay you want to reduce the randomness okay so that will give you the best fit so that's what entropy is to calculate entropy this is a formula which has been used and in max term this pi okay p1 p2 etc this is a proportion of data labeled as class ci we defined it as entropy we'll be taking this value from our calculation from decision tree it will be done in the back and a log to the base 2 will be taken for this value and their multiplication and they will be subtracted and finally we'll be taking a sum of this value okay pi log 2 of pi so with this this entropy can be calculated for example this is another data set which is having a feature uh, for example the same play golf okay yes or no so based on it the entropy will be calculated for it a value will be obtained like that see here how it is calculated we are having yes 9 times and no 5 times so the entropy of uh, this 5 comma 9 will be the formula will be applied okay uh, this is the percentage of them can you see it i'll tell you what is this p1 is which is the proportion of the data see here don't get confused i have two classes here it can be further classes we'll be adding it in the formula when we have it 9 and 5 is there so the probability of 5 is 0.36 and the probability of 9 is 0.64 so when you apply this to this formula for 0.36 it is 0.36 into log to the base 2 with 0.36 similarly 0.64 will be applying here and you will be subtracting it the summation will be taken okay sorry th this is also a negative value this is also a negative value see here summation of this negative thing so this is also a minus is there here also a minus is there so the total will get added it is coming around 0.94 this is how this value entropy is calculated so like that what we will be doing is with this entropy value we'll be going with another formula that is information gain please follow this now you know how to calculate entropy after getting this entropy what we will be doing is we have a parent and children uh, concept right here a parent class and a children columns so like that for every combination of parent and children using this entropy for each we'll be calculating a information gain information gain is another important concept related to entropy in decision tree and it quantifies the reduction in entropy achieved by a particular split and the formula for information gain or this value information gain is entropy of your parent you know how to calculate the entropy of the parent right you can pass your parent here which is for example if it's a weather first time then temperature you can calculate for every one okay you will be calculating information gain for one by one minus the weighted average the summation of all the children entropy so that will be calculated so okay like that for every features you are having this will be calculated and this entropy you know right if you will give it inside you will be getting value and when you subtract it with your parent class you will be getting the information gain and decision tree algorithms typically select the split with the highest information gain as it represent the most effective way to reduce uncertainty or impurity in the data which means your entropy should be very low okay but if you want to have entropy very low then the information gain should be high okay if the information is gain is high which means that your entropy value is very low which means decision tree algorithm typically select the split okay it will calculate for every possibility and select the split which has highest information gain which means it will be having lowest entropy inside of it or lowest uncertainty uncertainty or impurity inside of it so this is the formula for your uh, information gain will be the parent minus the summation of the parents uh, summation of the children entropy for example this is the calculation is happening 
and the weighted average this is how it will be taken so the, from the total it will be calculated 17 is the value here in the children here 13 is for him total is 30 so divided by 30 multiplied by the value of entropy here 13 divided by 30 multiplied by the entropy value of child 2 that will be calculated which is 0 0.615 so the information gain is going to be parent entropy minus this weighted average of children so this total is information gain like that for every parent and children combination we will be getting a gain value see here with outlook as parent and these as children we are getting the gain as 0.247 with temperature as parent and remaining as children we are getting 0 0.029 and like that we are getting these values so in these four values tell me guys which should our decision tree algorithm select you can give the answer which should it select it should select the highest gain value right where the value is very high it should select because it will have the lowest entropy that will be a good fit so the gain value is high here in our outlook when you go with outlook as a parent so that will be selected highest gain is taken and they will be subtracted till your last leaf node in all the place it will be done this is what is happening in a decision tree algorithm and uh, yeah so that's all about a decision tree classifier you can have binary and multi-class classifications that is actually good and this is how the best fit is selected and you know like answering these questions once you got the best fit by answering these questions the output will be selected so if you pass a new parameter it, it just want to pass the yes or no one by one so that the output can be selected from that yes or no will be selected from that so that is how a decision tree classifier works okay once again you can have decision tree regressor also but in the first itself i have told you decision tree is not actually preferred for regression you can do that too so when you go for decision tree regressor here you don't have any classes like this right so the output how it is calculated is there is something known as mean squared error this mean squared error is nothing but i haven't told you this term we'll be seeing this term particularly when we discuss about our uh, metrics in our day 17 which is how to evaluate your algorithm for regression when we see about linear regression what we have done we need to find a line which has the best fit which has less error which means the summation of the error okay so when you have the mean value of your error okay if you calculate the error that is actually mean error calculation so when you get the error if you square it and take a mean of it that are actually nothing but square the value of it which is nothing but mean squared error which is msc and uh, when you split it the idea of this the decision tree regressor to find the best fit is to get a line okay so get a split which has very less mean squared error which means low error and you should find in which order if it splits it has the less error in the output that will be preferred and that will be given to the next set of nodes and that will be taken as our parent and children node and that's all about our decision tree regressor and you can have these both from sklearn.tree so it's a tree based algorithm under this package which is tree so from sklearn.tree you can import decision tree classifier and from sklearn.tree you can import decision tree regressor and proceed with that yeah so i'll tell you how to go hands on and import it from sklearn.tree you can import decision tree classifier See here, the name starting letters will be caps. If you don't go with it, you will be getting error of not finding the particular thing. Decision tree regressor is also available. And with that, you can actually create objects for classifier and regressor and use it in your algorithm. All these max things will be done behind your algorithm, but you need to have what is the idea of what is happening behind to be a good machine learning scientist and it will help you a lot in the interviews also. Yeah. So continuing with the next one, we'll see the rest of the algorithms, which is ensemble algorithms like random forest, adaboost, xgboost, and neobias, k-nearest classifier, and the clustering algorithm in the next session. So in this session, we have seen about uh, two important algorithms elaborately, which is support vector machines and decision trees. And uh, I think totally in the last two sessions, we have covered linear regression, lasso, ridge, logistic regression, and then support vector classifier, support vector regressor, 
decision tree classifier and decision tree decision tree regressor so we'll see the rest of the algorithms in the next session thank you